Hello everyone, in today's video we're going to be taking a look at high bypass engines and flyouts. So this is kind of part three. Uh, previously we took a look at turboprops, we also took a look at reciprocating engines. Now it's going to be time to tackle these, which in my opinion are probably the toughest of all of the different engines to actually simulate. Other than of course our pesky propellers, which isn't an engine but it's just as annoying. The important thing to know about all jet engines is they are glorified air pumps. Uh, they suck air in the front, they squish it, add some fuel and blast it out the back and of course extract some energy from that prop process to keep this compressor in the front going. Now, one of the things that engineers do is they're always looking for ways to make these more efficient. So one of the methods they do is they stick a fan on it. Now, when I click on low bypass, you're like, where's the fan? Um, this is the fan. You can't see, but inside of here, there's actually a smaller container. You know, these, of course, are very popular in jets because they're small. Then, of course, you could get really absurd and you can put a big fan on the front like we have here. This is what makes you a high bypass engine. Now, high bypass engines are great because all basically you have your little inner core here is running this huge fan. Now, when a jet engine works for it to work well, it takes a certain mass of air and it tries to accelerate it. The harder it accelerates it or the greater volume of air that it gets accelerated is going to increase your thrust. So the idea of a high bypass is we take a lot of air and we move it just a little tiny bit faster in order to get more thrust. And it's a great method. Now, the big thing with this is you have to remember that this big fan uses a lot of energy. And one of the problems we're going to face is trying to optimize how much we suck out of this versus how much we're basically going to be producing out of the middle here. Now, the good news is, is they have this item called bypass ratio, which is going to dictate how much air goes past kind of the power section of my jet engine here and how much of the air is actually just going to be going through the inside here to kind of do the work of getting this thing turning. Now, unfortunately, there's no variable for that over here. Uh, to calculate that, we can either measure this this and then compare it to this, or it can be wicked lazy. And we can just go right to the sim and see what my ratio is. Now we can see here our bypass ratio is about 5.63 to 1, which is actually pretty good. Uh, that's pretty typical. Uh, the other thing we're going to observe here is our N1, which is basically um, how hard is everybody working. I can see that N2 is really working hard here. It's almost going the speed of sound. I can see my N1 is being pretty lazy here. It's kind of working. It's not working too hard. Uh, remember, by the way, my N1 is also connected to the fan. So um, keep in mind that my fan mock here, my fan's working pretty hard, but my N1 isn't working so hard. So these all need to be balanced. It's something we'll deal with in a minute. And we can also, of course, see that my current thrust is pretty pitiful. Uh, that, that That's pretty lame, especially for a high bypass engine. But the important thing is we know what our ratio is. Now, some people say, what ratio should you design your engine for? Well, if you know the actual numbers, design the actual numbers. If you don't, of course, uh, we can just keep tweaking. Uh, the key element is the higher the bypass ratio, the worse the performance at altitude. So what I like to do when I'm doing a clean sheet design here is I like to start by dropping the fan pressure ratio to one. I like to put my LPC to three and I like to leave this at nine, which is gonna give me a nice even balance here of about 27 to one from overall. So this is gonna be good for us. So the other thing we could do too at this stage is we can fits with the fans. I can see that we have a pretty low number of fans in this particular design. That's okay, that's not a bad thing. Uh, generally you increase the number, not fans, blades rather. Uh, generally you only increase the blade count if we uh, know we can get more out of this engine. And uh, we'll see what I mean. So so let's go ahead and run it on the bench. Now there's going to be a couple different things we're going to be looking for when we run this thing on the bench. Uh, the first thing, of course, we're going to be looking for is how much thrust we produce. Uh, the next thing we're going to be interested in is seeing our Mach numbers to see if our engine's working hard enough here. Now the Mach numbers are really important for us because they're going to let us know how well optimized our engine is right now. So let's go ahead and crank this up to half power. And we can see uh, we're producing about 24,000 kilonewtons, which for something this small, that's actually pretty good. But not bad. Remember, it's only half power, too. Uh, the big thing, our air flows are good. Uh, let's see here. Our power, our N1 is working actually really hard. Our N2 is really working hard. That makes sense, though, because our N2 is the high-pressure compressor. And our fan is really, really working hard right now. That's actually bad. Uh, that means we're going to have issues later on. So let's go ahead and crank this up to full power. Now, if you listen, yeah, hear that song noise? That is the sound of a blade exceeding the speed of sound. So um, we have a problem right now, and that's the fact that um, the velocity of our fan is so high, it's actually exceeding the speed of sound. I love that sound effect, but that's just me. But that's bad news, because um, when we start ripping down the runway at high speed now, we're going to run into a situation where our engine's going to go bah, 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 and start basically backfiring. You know, we're going to get a compressor stall, which is bad. Um, so we need to fix that. It means our fan is obviously, it needs to either be more blades or we need to do something to slow it down. We can also increase the pressure ratio. Thrust right now is about 40,000 kilonewtons, which is fabulous. That's awesome. 
Like, absolutely awesome. That's great thrust. Not bad at all. This, this is actually a really good engine. So let's take a look at what we know and fix it. So how do we slow the fan down? Well, there's two basic plot philosophies for that. One, of course, is we can increase the pressure ratio, which is going to help us with efficiency. Or, of course, we can add more blades to it. So let's go ahead and go the uh, Boeing, or the uh, Pratt Whitney route here, and we're just going to add some more blades. So now we're 20 blades. That's a little absurd, but let's see what it does in the sim. Right, we're sitting here at a half throttle here. We're producing about 24,000 kilonewtons, which is good. Good. That's not bad. Not bad at all. Pressure ratio is pretty good. We're pretty low right now. Um, my fan is still moving pretty quick. And you can see, uh, basically, what we have achieved here is that by adding a little more inertia to it, absolutely nothing. Because by adding the increasing the number of blades, basically, we're just extracting a little more energy out of it. Um, that did a little tiny bit for a thrust. But the key thing here is we're still just running this thing way, 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 way too fast. So how are we going to fix this? Well, the good news is um, we can actually adjust the pressure ratio of our particular engine here, which is one of the excellent strategies to kind of help this out. So I'm going to reduce the number of blades down to 15, which is probably a safer count anyway. Of course, we can go with the bigger diameter fan. That will also slow things down. But what I'm going to do instead is change my pressure ratio a little bit. And that means basically that our fan is going to be doing more compression than just blowing air through it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to up the fan pressure ratio to 1.5 to 1. Watch what happens now. You can observe that my fan is going a little bit slower. As a matter of fact, it's going so much slower. It's actually only pulling 0.58 right now, which is uh, abysmal. The other thing you'll probably observe is my net thrust is half of what it was because there's so much less airflow through the fan. Remember, it's going to be the square of the speed here. So doubling this and increases my thrust basically by four. So you can see that our pressure ratio here has a huge impact on how much we're letting through right now. And However, it's not much. We can obviously increase the blade count here, or we can increase the temperature a little bit. Or there's a lot of little things, but we've absolutely killed our performance by doing that. So let's uh, reduce that to a more reasonable number. We'll do 1.05 and see what happens. You can see here that we're uh, punching about 0.94, um, which is still pretty substantial. Like I said, uh, we're outside of that kind of danger zone now. Uh, 0.94 is actually a pretty acceptable number, but you can see just how happy my engine is about it. As it's creating such a pressure drop, it's causing basically a cloud to form inside of the propeller blades here, or the <laughs> rotor blades. The interesting thing we have here is it's not bad. Uh, but uh, the good news is our fan is stabilized. This is not bad. It, it, it's okay. Um, but we also notice that our N1 is still not working very hard here. And remember that my fan is plugged into the N1. So we're not getting a lot of basically core power from that, so to speak. We're at 35 kilonewtons, which is, that's fair. It's not bad for an engine this small. Again, this is a tiny fan. This is like a one meter fan. This is not a lot. And uh, keep in mind, we're doing okay. Uh, N2 is still fine. And one we could probably tweak with, which will be kind of the next step for us to kind of mess with. Fuel economy is fantastic. Not bad at all. And noise is actually pretty good. So let's uh, head back inside and uh, see what we can do here. So our fan is looking pretty darn good right now. We can tweak the number of blades and stuff like that, but that's not going to make that much of a difference from here. Our next big concentration is going to be on what we're going to be doing with our pressure ratios here. Now, right now, our overall pressure ratio is 27 to 1. We can get more power out of the jet engine by making it hotter, or we can increase the pressure ratio. So let's go ahead and up the pressure ratio here. And you'll notice, by the way, this entire segment got a little bit longer because we added more blades to the front of our little turbine here. Now, you're probably going, that's probably not going to be that substantial of a difference. Uh, we were producing about 35-something. What is that going to do to us here? As you can see, uh, not a heck of a lot. Uh, the biggest difference here is you'll notice my fan is actually turning faster now, and my N1 is actually moving quite a bit quicker. And because, remember, we've added more stages to the compression phase, which is going to be increasing the pressure inside. So naturally, these two things are going to be coming up together with each other. And that gives you sort of an idea. We've also gotten a louder engine. And our total thrust increase is, yeah, not that great. You know, that's not that big of a change. Well, one thing you probably observed, though, is my fuel economy went up a little tiny bit, which is not a bad thing. So let's say you said, I'm happy with this engine so far, but I want more performance out of it. Is there anything else we can do to this thing? Like, I like it. You know, it's a pretty good prototypical engine. You know, I, you basically made a CFM 56 light here. Uh, I just want more out of it. What can you do for me? Well, next step, of course, would be the combustor. And uh, increasing the temperature is going to have a fantastic impact on our performance. So, for example, if I were to take this and crank this up to 2,000, which, um, <laughs> look, that, that's the cost of the engine. Um, and now I'm going to go and run in here. Yes, I could also take the utility drive off of it and stuff like that. I'm not going to. 
we have massively increased the pressure and temperatures taking place inside of our combustor here. So what is that going to do for our performance? Remember, we were at 37 a moment ago. Um, this might uh, not surprise you, but you'll see what I mean. And we have effectively doubled our thrust. And that gives you just an idea of just how insane of an impact that has. And um, of course, we're still moving pretty close. Notice, by the way, our fan has slipped up a tiny bit here, which means we need to either change our pressure ratio of our fan, make it up a little bit higher, or we're going to have to, of course, up play with our N1. Also notice our N2 is getting dangerously close to Mach 1. You don't really want a Mach 2, Mach 1 compressor inside of your jet engine. That's not a good combination. And our bypass ratio stayed up, but notice what happened to our fuel economy. It's, it's garbage, and also notice that the noise has increased quite substantially. Not that we're being rated on noise, but we're at 54 kilonewtons of thrust here, which is absolutely fantastic. So let's go back and uh, make a couple quick little changes here to make this thing a little bit, um, I don't want to call it user-friendly, but a little more polite, if that makes sense. And uh, then we'll go ahead and give it one more test. You can see here that um, we're doing great. Our fan mock is very acceptable. Our thrust is still 45,000 kilonewtons. Um, we've actually hurt our fuel economy even more because of this increased to pressure ratio, but we have slowed this down a little bit, which is going to be a little bit safer for us as far as not getting compressor stalls, which you don't really want to get anyway. Uh, that could be kind of dangerous. Exhaust velocity is really good. That's actually awesome. Our bypass ratio is fine, our pressure ratio, everything is looking pretty good. Our numbers are right where they need to be, and our thrust is really, really good for an engine this small. Now, one thing you always want to test, of course, is to pop the thing to idle and see if it cuts out on you. That's always a great test. Keep in mind the speeds here and the inertias and everything along those lines have a big impact on the performance. Now, you're probably saying, okay, I like all that. Uh, you did a nice job. Uh, you've basically summarized everything quite nicely for us here. Um, everything makes sense. I'm understanding. Can you do a really, really high bypass engine? I knew you were going to ask me to do that. Um, the answer is yes. So if we increase the diameter of this substantially, remember, by the way, we're dealing with volumes here. We're not dealing in... I'm actually going to have to reduce my LPC. I can tell you already. I'm also going to reduce this a little bit here. Um, that's probably going to be fine. If you want to do something absurd like this, um, this is going to give you a lot of problems. And I'll take a look at why. Well, the first one's going to be that the engine's going to want to cut out at you as soon as you start. <laughs> You'll observe that um, I'm uh, uh, hitting it as hard as I can. It sounds like it's shut down, but it's still running, I swear. And a couple different things here. Uh, first of all, our thrust is not that much better. Uh, the next thing you'll know is my bypass ratio is a staggering 20 to 1. I warned you because it's volume. And at full throttle, we're barely using any fuel at all. And you can hear that this thing is a staggering 113 decibels with a specific fuel uh, consumption of 5.37, which is insane. This is a very, very nice engine from a uh, marketing perspective because it's incredibly high thrust, but incredibly low fuel, uh, incredibly good fuel economy here. Looks like an absolute exercise in absurdity here. So what happens if I cut the throttle? Hear that? That's the sound of inertia, my friend. Oh yeah, that's the sound of inertia. We still got combustion? Yeah, we still got combustion. Full throttle. There it goes. <laughs> what is this, a G90-115C or something like that? I don't know. So the key thing here is you absolutely can go with high bypass ratios, but your performance at altitude are going to be terrible. So I'll always kind of keep that on the back of your head if that's something you want to do. Now, one of the things I saw a little while ago, which I thought was incredibly amusing, is that the people who were like, hmm, I have a bad idea, and somebody goes, well, I know a way to make that worse. And of course, then there's me who's like, wait a minute, I agree, I can work with that. And that's the idea of um, putting a propeller on the front of a high bypass engine. Now, it's one of these things where it's like, no, 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 you're not going to do that. You, you would not put a propeller on the front of a high bypass engine. Um, yeah, I would. Watch me. And the other thing, of course, we could do is we could put on an afterburner if you want to be like a goofball or something like that. But I think this is going to be offensive enough to all engineers out there. So I think this will be fine. So I'm going to put a gearbox in the front. Nobody said this was a good idea. Somebody just said that this would be a funny idea. So I said, I agree with you. I agree with you. Put a big 7 to 1 ratio on there. I'm going to go ahead and get a propeller on here. I'll put a rotor on the front. That looks pretty good to me. Uh, we're going to go ahead and make myself a little mini one. Obviously, that's going to be moving pretty fast. I'm just guessing the numbers here. I'm guessing it's going to be 15. I'm guessing it's going to be like 5 or 6 or something like that. Uh, constant mock. Uh, we're going to run this up to 0.75. And we're going to set this between 1 and 25. Ah, that looks pretty good to me. So what we've done is 
we have attached a propeller to the front of let's do the gearbox. And we're going to connect my gearbox to the um, bah, 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 inputs. So we're going to do the jet engine here. Uh, we're going to call this uh, jet engine. Cool. So now I have a prop jet. I have invented a jet engine high bypass propeller doohickey. And it, it, it's an offensive device and it shouldn't be allowed in 50 countries and all that other good stuff. Let's try it. That's not an irritating sound. <laughs> so let's see here. I have uh, 92.54 kilonewtons of thrust, and my little propeller on the front is, um, let's see here. He's uh, pushing 5.73 kilonewtons. Bah! Humbug, I say. Humbug. That's not nearly enough. Uh, let's see here. What did I say? Mock response is pretty good. I like that. And again, it's uh, turning pretty well there, which is not too, too, too bad here. We could actually increase the cord a little bit. Yeah, it looks pretty good right there. I'll make it a little bit thicker of a blade. Let's try it again. Oh, yeah. Now we're talking 85.16 kilonewtons of thrust out the back. 21.54 kilonewtons of thrust out the front. Oh, yeah. Now, for half a second there, I was afraid that this thing would actually start moving across the runway. I was not expecting to get uh, thrusts like this and powers like this, and uh, that is just an atrocity. Um, I can't believe that this should be allowed. As a matter of fact, I think I'm going to take a picture of that because it's so wrong. The key thing here is what I love about this program is if you want to be creative and imaginative and original like this, please do. And uh, that's one of the things I just love about it. And the fact that you could put all these things together and create the most absurd, silly thing that you could possibly imagine. And it will work, assuming in the real world, if you could engineer it. Enjoy.